So at IRC, we believe that local biodiversity matters, especially in densely populated places like Delray Beach, right? We're very urbanized here. Um, and so getting these pockets of local biodiversity like we have here is really beneficial. Uh, the United Nations declared 2021 to 2030 the decade on ecosystem restoration, making all of this work uh, very timely. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to talk about habitat restoration, we'll talk about orchard view, and then go on a little walk. So what does it mean when we use the phrase habitat restoration? Habitat restoration means um, the purposeful rehabilitation of an area to recreate a functional ecosystem. Successful habitat restoration requires understanding species and their life cycles. Uh, for example, a common invasive, not one that we had to deal with so much here, but um, a common one in South Florida is Brazilian pepper. Anybody familiar with that plant? It produces thousands of red berries. So in trying to line up uh, your habitat restoration efforts, it's important to treat that plant before it fruits. Why do you think it might be a good idea to get rid of that plant before it fruits? So what type of 
ecosystem are we trying to recreate? Orchard View actually has an interesting history. Does anybody know what this is? Do you know? Is it an orchard Good, yes, with the name of the park. It does have a specific name. Do you know what it is? Yeah. Oh, that's a good guess because I just said air potato. I am going to show you one of those. Yeah. So maybe that's a common name that I'm not familiar with. But this is a pond apple, if you've ever heard of that. So um, at the entrance to the park, there are several pond apple trees, which lets us know that Orchard View Park probably used to be a wetland. Um, pond apples like wet conditions. Um, but, um, and that makes sense that this would have been historically a wetland because it wasn't uh, developed and wetlands aren't good places to develop, but over time it has got drier conditions and it is starting to transition into a forest. So these are all things to kind of keep in mind when we're trying to get back to like an ideal ecosystem for here. So now the trees here are really tall sable palms and live oaks. We also have white stopper, wild lime, wild coffee, and Simpson stopper. Um, most of these I should hopefully be able to point out when we go on our walk. Um, and all of these plants are important for butterflies and birds that live here. For example, butterflies like the giant swallowtail, which is a big, beautiful black and yellow butterfly. Um, they use the wild lime plant for its larval host plant. Anybody know what that means? The larval host plant? Yeah, you know. Exactly, and most butterflies are very specific. They only have certain plants that they will do that on. And so the wild line here is an example for the giant swallowtail. Um, and then birds like warblers, cardinals, and blue jays all use wild coffee for shelter, fruit, and insects. So lots of ecosystem services here. Um, there's also a paradise tree coming up in the hammock, which is moving uh, from higher and drier areas around the park and is adding to some of the native um, biodiversity. We can expect species like pigeon plums, plants wood, um, and other more tropical native species to start showing up in the ecosystem. They'll start making sense here. Um, and so in order for these species to thrive and provide ecosystem functions, um, we needed to clear the site of some of the invasive plants. So, back here, whoever told me, air potato for an answer. Luckily, I didn't find very many when I walked around and tried to grab one, but I did find one. So this is a little air potato. It grows off of a air potato vine. Um, the scientific name is Diosporia bulbifera. So this is a little bulb, so the name kind of makes sense. Um, it's a non-native vine that is originally from Asia and Africa, not from the um, U.S. But we found it in Florida way back in the early 1900s. It's been around for a long time. And nowadays, it's actually in all 67 counties in Florida. Um, it has large heart-shaped leaves. The leaves, I can act on the long end, so it does kind of look like a heart. Um, and it is a vine, so it grows up and over things. Um, even though the name is potato, air potatoes are not in the potato family, rather they're in the yam family, which is kind of a fun fact. Then another fun fact about air potatoes is it's very rare to get male plants in Florida. We don't see them flowering very often. Rather, the female plants just produce these little um, bulbs, and most air, air potato plants are actually clones of each other. So it kind of has an interesting life history. Are they edible if Good they're question. in the yam family? The easy answer is no. Um, other countries will boil these down and eventually use them into food, but they're not edible in the sense of like just popping them like you would other edible berries um, if they're cooked right. Yes. But I'm just going to ask them like and say no, so if I don't go eat them. But yeah, good question. Um, these grow really fast. They can grow up to eight inches a day, which is very fast growth, so it doesn't take long for them to cover things. And they will eventually completely cover things. And that blocks light for the native uh, vegetation underneath. Um, and it makes these very hard to manage when they grow um, you know, so tall and so rapidly. Um, as we walk around the site in a few minutes, you might notice that lots of the leaves have these little white marks in them. Any idea what these might come from? Yeah. Um, little tiny insects eating leaves. Yeah, and actually there's a specific insect. There is a beetle, have you guys heard of it? That was released.
released as um, a biological control um, in an effort to like reduce and slow the growth on these. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work as efficiently as they had hoped. Um, so we do still have to come in and like manually treat them. Um, but you'll see these bite marks all over, and we might see um, a beetle or two if we look closely. Um, let's see. So IRC's ecological restoration team. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work as efficiently as they had hoped. Um, so we do still have to come in and like manually treat them. Um, but you'll see these bite marks all over, and we might see. Um, a uh, beetle or two if we look closely. Um, let's see, so IRC's ecological restoration team has been out here treating uh, plants like air potato. Also, what this one? you know? It's a snake plant. It's a snake plant. So people love these in their pots by their homes because apparently they're good air filters. But their problem is they don't stay in the pot by your home and they spread like wildfire through um, our different habitats. So we'll see some patches over here that um, are in progress. You can see some cut down there and we'll continue working on that patch. So this is another plant we've been treating. And we've also been treating, it's called Neptisis, if I'm saying that correctly, sometimes called American Evergreen. Um, it's Syngonia plotophyllum. That one we will kind of stay clear of because it has um, large thorns on it, but it's another one. We'll look at some areas where it's starting to die off. Um, and Orchard View Park is certainly still a work in progress, but it's headed in the right direction. And um, it's so important to protect and conserve um, green spaces like this, especially in one up there, like places like urban South Florida. There are so many unique plants and animals native to South Florida that depend on sites like this. So can you guys think of any steps that you could personally take at either your school or your home to help protect Delray's green spaces? Yeah. Uh, oh, make sure the plant needs sunshine. Yeah, that's a great, a great idea. So planting the right plant, things that are native to Florida, and then giving them the right kind of light conditions that they want, taking care of them with watering, that's a great idea. Yeah. Space. Yeah, giving them space. Um, taking advantage of lawns. Uh, we have so much, you know, grass in our lawns in the U.S., but adding in plants in there is a great idea. Yeah. Making a greenhouse. Ooh, a greenhouse. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, as you said, it's not the greenhouse. Is aloe vera actually native for Ooh, good question on if it's native or not. I can look that up when we're on our walk. Um, I know it's at least not invasive. My gut says it's not native, but it does. I have one growing in my yard. I like having aloe around. Yeah, I, I actually have a few plants over my A building. That's awesome. In my development. Awesome. Well, yeah, if you plant plants to attract butterflies and birds and bees, um, it helps create a, like, network between all of these green spaces. So the decisions you make at your school and your home really does um, all tie in together. Um, so if I'll see if there's any questions, and then if not, maybe we'll go walk around and see what kind of stuff we can find. Yeah, thanks, Tara, for that awesome, informative talk about points of view. Um, for those of you at home, uh, you heard all the amazing questions. They're coming from the fifth grade safety patrol at Orchard View Elementary, so I want to say a huge thank you to you all for coming out. They're going to continue with us on our walk so they can go uh, look at what's actually going on here. Um, the rest of you at home, check out our website to see the upcoming events uh, or look at the posts that are on Facebook. We have the different events scheduled for the rest of today and tomorrow for Climate and Art this year. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.